Hey everyone, I am here to talk to you guys about the ins and outs of having a new foster dog and how you can be best prepared when taking care of that dog. The first thing you should do is be prepared before bringing your foster dog home. You want to have all the supplies you need before that foster dog comes into your house. So this is what I like to get before bringing my foster dogs home. What you need is a crate because this is what you're going to use to house train them. A bed, leash, collar, harness, whatever you're going to be using to walk the dog. You want food. Of course, you're always going to have dry kibble, but I also like to grab just one can of wet food too because you never know if that foster dog is going to want to eat the second that they come into your house. They might be a little nervous. Their appetite might not be there. Now, those are the necessities that you need before bringing your dog home. Now, next, before you bring your dog into the house, you want to have their crate set up like this right here. You want it set up before they even step into your home. So you want the crate, a bed. I always put a chewing object in the crate. You want this set up in here because it'll be nice and comfy for them and they can learn that this is their home, this is their area the second that they come into your house. Now, the second step for some of you and most of you is introducing that foster dog to your dogs that you already have in your home. So this can be a little tricky, but you want to do it as controlled as possible. And remember, it's not always going to be love at first sight for your dogs and the foster dog for many different reasons. So you want to give them a little bit of time to warm up to each other. You also want to give your dogs and the foster dogs space by themselves. So I'm going to link a YouTube video on proper greetings right here, and you guys can click on that for a lengthier version and more details on how to properly introduce two new dogs to each other. And just remember to keep it very controlled, and you don't want too much excitement going on in these greetings because that can escalate to something more extreme. And you know your dog's personality. You are going to be able to decide which foster dogs are going to be best suitable for your dogs if it needs to be a female, if it needs to be a male. So definitely keep those things in mind too. The third thing that you should do the second your foster dog comes into your home is give them structure. You want to have such a structured schedule for your foster dog. It'll make your life 10 times easier and it'll teach your foster dog how to behave in the house. So our first step was already setting the crate up before your dog comes into the home. Now, another thing that you need to do is have regular scheduled meal times. So this is usually two meals a day, a breakfast and a dinner. So you want to have those meals around the same time every day. If you have regular meal times, you're going to have regular bowel movements. So this will help you so much. On top of those strict meal times, what you need to do is have strict potty breaks. So treat that foster dog as if it's a two month old puppy and you are potty training them. You want to take them out as frequently as possible to avoid having accidents in the house. So if you feed your dog breakfast at 8 a.m., take them out before 8.30 because that is about the time frame where that dog is going to have a bowel movement because they just had breakfast. So about that half hour range, obviously depending if you have a super small puppy, I would probably take them out about 15 minutes after that first meal time. But strict potty breaks go out as frequently as possible because you want to avoid accidents in the house. These frequent potty breaks are going to help with the potty training, help with house training, and another thing that you need to do when bringing a foster home is feed your dogs and your foster dogs separately. You don't know your foster dogs past most of the time. You don't know how your dogs are going to react to this new dog coming into their home. It is better safe than sorry. So feed your dogs separately. I always feed my foster dogs in their crate. It helps with crate training. It helps with them being relaxed in here. First meal when they walk into my house, that first dinner time is going to be in their crate. I set it off right off the bat and everything just goes smoother that way. So feed your foster dog in the crate while your dogs are eating separately in a different room. So keep these things very, very separate because you never know how they're going to interact. For giving your dog structure the second they come into your home, we have strict meal times, frequent potty breaks to avoid accidents inside the house, 
and we have feeding them separately. So all of these are gonna go hand in hand. The strict meal times will then go with their bowel movements and feeding them separately just to avoid any issues. Another thing that you need to keep in mind with giving your dog, your foster dog structure is give them time to adjust. Not every dog is going to just bounce right back the second they're coming to a new home. Sometimes they need a couple hours, sometimes they need a couple days, sometimes they even need a couple weeks. So give them that time. And all of these things will really help build their confidence, make them more comfortable. So make sure that you're prepared before bringing that foster dog, dog into your home. The fourth thing that you should be doing with your foster dog is crate training. We've already gone over a couple things that I like to do right off the bat is making it comfortable, making them know that this is their home, this is their den. So making it comfortable for them, make sure that they are having their meal times in here so then they know that this is a happy place that makes that positive association for them. Also, I always like to have different shoes in the crate with them, whether that be antlers, one of my favorites, you can get bully sticks. If you ever give them some kind of treat, make sure that it's in the crate. Hi, what are you doing? Are you coming to say hi? Are you coming to say hi? You want to have those extra chewing objects in the crate because it'll help ease their mind, give them something to occupy themselves. So crate training, first thing is make that positive association with the crate, with it being comfortable, chews, treats in the crate, meal times in the crate. Every single night from the night they get into the house, your dog is going to sleep in the crate. Having your dog sleep the entire night in the crate teaches them to relax and that this is a place where they can relax. So every night sleeping in the crate. That crate, that structure that we talked about is based around the crate. The crate is not a bad place. The crate is a good place. So do not feel guilty about putting your foster dog into the crate. So first thing with crate training is make the positive association in all the ways that we just went over. Second thing is teach your dog a go to the crate command. I am going to link another crate training video right here that is more in depth, gives you more details on how to teach your dog a go to your crate command and will help them desensitize of the crate with a good weight command in the crate too. So that will be here in this more in depth video for crate training. Now, I know a lot of fosters have problems with separation anxiety. Everything that we've already talked about is naturally going to help avoid separation anxiety in the first place, but I'm gonna give you guys a couple more tips on how to do that or how to prevent it the second that you bring that foster dog into the home. So the crate being set up already is an awesome step because the second that they come into your home, they know that this is their area, this is their space, it's comfortable, they can relax. You're already doing the meal times in the crate. All meal times should be in the crate. If you're going to give your foster dog a bully stick, a some kind of bone, something that's a treat or a chew that's going to take them a little bit longer, make sure that you're giving it to them in the crate. Now, another thing that I like to do is put your dog in the crate even when you're home for short periods of time. So this can be, you can put the dog in the crate for two minutes or you can put the dog in the crate for two hours while you're home because then your dog realizes that going into the crate doesn't mean that you're leaving every single time. You're also going to have your dog sleep in the crate. Sleeping in the crate teaches them to relax. We've already gone over that, but these are all things that will really help avoid that separation anxiety in the first place. Another thing is don't make hellos and goodbyes a big deal. If you're constantly, oh my gosh, I'm so sorry, I'm leaving, or the second you come home, you run to the crate and it's the energy's all the way up here, don't do that because then they are getting more worked up in those situations, which leads to that separation anxiety. The last thing that I'm gonna talk to you guys about is socialization for your foster dog. Now, a lot of people think that socialization means that your dog needs to be interacting with another dog or your dog needs to be interacting with another human, but this can simply just be learning new environments, exploring different areas, hearing different sounds, seeing that dog across the street. These are all ways to properly socialize your foster dog or your dogs of your own. But when you bring that new foster dog into your house, think of this. You want to create a positive association with everything that is going on. 
So if you live by the airport and you hear those airplanes flying by all the time, that can really spook some dogs because they don't know what in the world is going on. So, oh, that airplane goes by, you get a treat. It builds that positive association in their mind and desensitizes them of those loud, noisy sounds that might scare them. When you go for walks for the first couple times and you see another dog on the leash, you should carry treats with you so you can just reward your foster dog for seeing that dog. And this really will help create a positive association with being on a leash, with seeing other animals, with other people. So it can be as simply as just giving your dog a treat as they're experiencing these new things and being in new environments. Also with socialization, obviously learning basic commands really builds a dog's confidence. So if you want to work on some basic obedience, that kind of thing with your foster dog, I'll link some videos here for you guys and you can work on those too. But these are the most important steps when having a new foster dog. And I hope this video really helps you guys. Let me know if you ever have any questions and good luck and thank you so much for being a foster. You're saving a dog's life.